Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Jessie and today we have Nicola from the Guyana Tourism Authority who is going to be taking us through the wildlife <laughs> in Guyana. I'm super excited for this webinar. We've done several um, different webinars on the tourism circuits of Guyana, which I'll include in this webinar follow-up, but I've been looking forward to this wildlife of Guyana uh, for quite some time. Before, every, before I hand everything over to Nicola, I just wanted to give you a few um, housekeeping notes. Please, please, please ask questions throughout the webinar. You can do that on the GoToWebinar control panel. So make sure you type those through. And if I can get to them during the webinar, I will um, be sure to reply to you. Otherwise, I have um, Nicola staying on for a few extra um a minute or so afterwards to get to those questions. Also, this webinar is being recorded, so if you have an important call or have to get to a meeting or lunch or something, don't worry, we will be sending a recording, um, and I highly encourage you to send that to your colleagues. Um, that, will be to, that will be in your inbox hopefully by the end of the week. But without further ado, I'm going to hand everything over to Nicola, who is going to be taking us through the wildlife of Guyana. Nicola. Thanks, Jesse, and hi, everyone. Thank you for making time for this webinar. We're excited to get to show you a little bit about Guyana and the wildlife that we have here. So Guyana is a rare kind of place, one where you can find nature in its original form, and sometimes we like to call it nature's beating heart. As Jesse mentioned, my name is Nicola Balram. I am the Senior Officer of Marketing here at the Guyana Tourism Authority. Emerging Destinations is our market representation firm in the North American markets. And we are so lucky to have a great partner like that that helps us to get the word out there to great folks like you guys. So just some small facts about Guyana in case this is the first time you're going to be on one of our webinars or have not heard of the country before. This is one of the smaller nations in South America, about the size of Idaho, and it's located just below the Caribbean Sea. Because of our location and the cultural mix that we have, we like to say again is the in-between between the Caribbean and South America. It is actually the only country in South America where English is the native language. And as I go through the webinar, I'm going to highlight some of the people you can meet in Guyana, including our indigenous peoples. And one of the better tourism experiences worldwide is that you can actually have a full-fledged conversation with them in English to learn about their culture and lifestyle. What is the Guyana tourism product? In five main pillars, Guyana is nature and wildlife, active exploration, culture and heritage, birding, and conservation and safe travel. In this presentation, you'll get a little bit more insight as to the nature and the wildlife that we have, as well as our birds. 90% of the population lives along the coast, leaving the country's lush interior untouched and ripe for exploration. Guyana is actually part of the Guyana Shield. The Guyana Shield comprises of parts of Colombia, Venezuela, Northern Brazil, and all of Guyana, Suriname, which is popularly known as Dutch Guyana and French Guyana. It is one of the only four pristine tropical rainforests left in the world and covers an area of 1.2 million square miles. Guyana is often sold with Suriname and French Guyana in a title trip called the Three Guyanas. We are the same time zone as the Eastern United States and Canada, which will minimize any jet lag any of your travelers or yourself would have when visiting the destination. Guyana's 883,000 square miles can best be divided into three main geographical tourism regions. These are the coastland, the rainforest, and our golden savannas. Within these different types of landscape, you'll have different types of accommodation. On the coastal end, you will have the more boutique hotels that are found in the capital city of Georgetown. And within certain rivers on the coast, end, you'll have the more island style accommodation. In rainforest, you will have a lot of the eco lodges. And in the savannas, you'll have more ranch lifestyle accommodation. Knowing about Guyana is great, but I bet you want to know how to get to Guyana. So Guyana is, there are major flight connections between North America and the United Kingdom. 
within South America, you can travel with TAM and Voa Vista, and you can do direct connections through Panama. We do have Caribbean airlines that have direct flights to Miami and New York, as well as a semi-direct flight to Toronto with a short stopover in Trinidad. American Airlines is also serving Guyana. Um, from, from Miami, you can also fly with Suriname Airways. And from our local regional connections in the Caribbean Islands, you can get connected with LIAT. American Airlines started flying in Miami since November 26, 2018 with four flights weekly, departing Miami and arriving Georgetown, and the return flight are four flights weekly as well. They will be starting their direct flights from JFK New York on December 18th in 2019, and we are very excited for that as well. Once you're in Guyana, you have three main modes of transportation. You can travel by road, by river, or by air. Depending on where you are staying, most of the transportation options start within the capital of city of Georgetown and from there you will travel by air or by road to your next destination more south in the country in the rainforest or savannas and once in those areas your transportation will be by road and by river. The best times to visit Guyana are generally through our peak seasons which are late August until April of the following year depending on which area you will be traveling you do have different seasons we call our wet or rainy or green season where it has a bit more rainfall in the country so this time it makes it a bit harder to do certain road transportations but you can travel a bit easier on the rivers and you get a chance to see a lot of the birding nests a bit up close and personal when it is the dry or the peak seasons it's not a lot of rain fall but it does make it easier to uh, spot wildlife, get between one lodge to another, as well as do some type of birding and some adventure activities. Ghana is known for its Amazonian rainforest, immense waterfalls, vast open spaces, golden savannas, mountains, and rivers. We're already, we are also extremely blessed to have extraordinary biodiversity that includes jaguars, giant anteaters, monkeys, snakes, the arapaima, which is the largest scaled freshwater fish of the world, and over 910 birding species. There is one single road that connects the north to the south of Guyana that, tra that carries you from the capital city all the way down to the border of Brazil. You can also fly there multiple times throughout the day. On your visit to Guyana, you'll be able to encounter some of our some of our many peoples. Guyana is a land comprised of six ethnic races. Um, some of the most common you will find are those of African, Indian, and indigenous descent. Most of your travels in Guyana when landing at either or Chetty Jagan International Airport or Eugene F. Cry International Airport, which are the two main airports in Guyana, will start in the capital city of Georgetown. Georgetown is known for its vibrant Caribbean influence and culture, and it's filled with a lot of heritage buildings, colors, fruits, vegetables, and warm, friendly, hospitable people. Some of the activities you can do in Georgetown and in Guyana include horseback riding in the ranches in the South Rupununi, fishing in the rivers and oceans, visiting Dutch ruins such as Fort Island, Fort Zelandia, Fort Kaik overall and the Esquibo River, and some of the heritage buildings in Georgetown. You can also do industrial tourism at our rice and sugar estates. Wildlife photography is a big, is a big pull in Guyana, as well as our community-led and owned tourism product, where you get to actually stay in some of these villages and experience a day-to-day -day life with the locals. So this presentation will cover a lot of the highlighted wildlife and birding species you can find in Guyana. On this map in the presentation, you will see some of the highlighted areas where you can spot wildlife. These include a lot of our lodges in the North Rupununi, in the rainforest, and in the South Rupununi, as well as some areas along our coastland. Meet the giants of Guyana. Guyana 
is blessed to have many giants. Two of the most popular species that a lot of people come to see are the jaguar and the giant anaconda. The jaguar and the giant anaconda, on both sides you'll see some important facts, but these can best be found in the rainforest areas of Guyana, specifically closer to the Atalaj and in the actual Irokrama rainforest. Lodges that you can visit these would include the Atta Lodge, Rewa Lodge, Ayurkrama Marine Forest. Both are important to the environment and both do help to sustain our ecosystem. On the image on the left hand side, you will see the Arapaima, which is the largest scale freshwater fish in the world. It reaches an average weight of 400 pounds, and they can they usually breed by air, which allows them to survive in pools of low water levels. Arapaima fishing is very popular in the Rewa and Rupununi rivers of Guyana, but it is strictly catch and release fishing. You do have to speak to your local tour operator to get you a license so that you can embark in catch and release. This is actually one of the few endangered uh, species that you can find in Guyana, and for that reason, we do strictly enforce catch and release fishing, not only on the government side, but most of the locals as well, including the villages of Rewa and the surrounding villages, do look at the species very particularly to ensure that they are being bred back to a healthy population. The black caiman is the largest predator in the Amazon basin. It's commonly known as the cousin to the alligator and the crocodile. The females breed once every two to three years and can lay up to 60 eggs. They are monitored and protected by a eco lodge in the village called Yupakari named Kaiman House. Kaiman House doubles also as a research center where on a weekly basis, they will travel out in the night to go and look for the population and engage in something called Kaiman tagging. Kaiman tagging is when visitors can come and go with the villages to go and catch the caiman in the night, bring them up onto the banks, you measure, weigh them, mark them, and then you put them back. So this is the way that the locals can ensure that the population is growing at a healthy rate. Guyana is also blessed to have many different species of turtles. Two of the main giant species are the giant river turtle, which is more commonly found in the rainforest and savanna regions. Some people call this the South American giant river turtle as well. They nest in the low water season and can lay up to 75 to 125 leathery eggs. They usually nest in groups and they do this so they can protect their eggs from predators. On the other side of the country, mostly in the coastal regions, Guyana is very popular for the leatherback turtle. This is the largest of all living turtles and is the fourth heaviest modern reptile in the world. They can grow up to six feet and weigh up to 2,000 pounds. There is an area on the coastline called Shell Beach, which is a protected area in Guyana where these animals are very popularly found and known as a main reproductive site for these animals. Now, our giants do not only speak to our wildlife, um, so we do have some giant plant species as well. This includes a giant water lily. It is Guyana's national flower named the Queen Victoria after the queen, Gan was once a British ruled colony. It grows up to four to six feet in water and leaves a spanning of more than eight feet across. It can be found in various colors such as white, uh, light pink, and a bit more of a baby pink color. Gan also has the giant river otter, which is the cousin to the weasel. Um, they do, they are very friendly but we do have caution when you are visiting them. One of the more popular areas in Ghana where you can find these animals are the Rewa Lodge and the Rewa River, as well as Karanambu Lodge. Karanambu is also known for protecting the species and its rehabilitation project of these species. 
one of the best things about the giant river otter is that they often travel in packs and families so you're very lucky and have a very high chance of seeing a full family of five or more on any time you get to see them in the wild. One of our other giants is called the capybara. This is the largest living rodent in the world. They are extremely social and live between groups of 10 to 20. They make a dog-like bark when threatened and when females are herding its young. It's one of the Maybe not the cuddliest one that you might see in the wild or one of the more highlighted giant species, but it is the largest rodent in the world, which makes it a very big draw for a lot of researchers and a lot of people that want to cross these giants off of their list. One animal that is a bit more popular in the South Rupununi circuit and the savannas of Guyana is the giant anteater. The giant anteater is one of the highlighted animals that many people come here to see. From the tip of the snout to the end of the tail, the giant anteater can reach a, a long breath. Um, it has a long tongue and is the only animal that has the longest tongue. Around the area when you do travel in the South Rupununi, you'll be able to spot some of their eating areas because their termite mounds can range up to 60 feet in height. They do, they are, they do seem cuddly from afar, but their fur is very prickly. So while they are a great sight to see, we do encourage that you have caution when you come into close proximity of them. One of the lesser known giants in the world, but still a giant in Guyana is the false vampire bat. The false vampire bat is the largest bat in the new world and the largest carnivore in the bat world. It has a one, a wingspan of up to three feet and body length of five images, five inches. There are no discretionary tails on the animal and is known to their bats. You can find them a lot more popular in the South Rupununi and Golden Savannas of Guyana. The bullet ant is the largest ant in the world and can be found in Guyana as well. Its sting is known to be one of the most painful of any insects and takes a full 24 hours of pain before it starts to recede. These ants are indigenous to rights of manhood and can live up to 60 days, up to 90 days. The cane toad is one of Guyana's giant amphibians. Cane toads can reach up to 3.9 to 5.9 inches in length and up to five pounds in weight. The females are larger um, and lay clutches up to 30,000 eggs. The growth is slow once they reach maturity and the life expectancy of a cane toad is 10 to 15 years. One of the more enticing giants of Guyana for a lot of insect and um, insect lovers is the Goliath bird eating spider. The Goliath bird eating spider is the largest spider in the world. They are considered to be the heaviest spider and have one of the longest leg spans, second to only the giant huntsman spider. When threatened, they rub their abdomens with their hind legs and release hairs that are harmful to humans. They eat mostly insects, worms and other spiders and occasionally can eat a small bird. They thrive in the swampy areas of the rainforest. Just to give you a bit of a idea of their size, if you hold up your hand and look at your palm, that will as well. Now this giant will be the perfect leeway into our birding of Guyana segment. This is the harpy eagle. The harpy eagle is the largest eagle in the world and the most powerful raptor in the world. Their wingspan is average up to 6.5 feet with a body length of three to 5.5 feet and can weigh up to 20 pounds. Females can be twice as heavy as males and their back talons are longer than the grizzly bear 
the bear claws. They are found in tropical lowlands, preferably vast and uninterrupted forest areas. And in Guyana, once they do make their nest, they do stay in those areas for three, for two to three years at a time. There are about three active nests currently in Guyana that are known close to lodges. These include the Sarama Eco Lodge in the village of Sarama, the Rewa Lodge, as well as the Warapoka Lodge. Now, these are just nests that are close to lodges that you can see within a short distance of walking or traveling from the lodge, but there are many more without throughout Guyana. So our birding segment. Guyana is known for being a bird watcher's paradise. It has over 910 species of birds. The map to the right in the bright green areas are some of our protected areas, but also some of the birding, highlighted birding areas in Guyana. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to highlight some of the birds that you can find on the coastal areas, some that you can find in the heart of the rainforest, as well as some that you can find more southern, downwards in the country in our golden savannas. The national bird of Ghana is the Hoatzin or the Kanji pheasant. It's also known as the reptile bird, skunk bird, stink bird, or Kanji, or Kanji pheasant. It is a tropical bird found in swamps, rainforests, and mangroves of the Amazon and Orinoco basins of South America. It is notable for having chicks that have claws and two of their wingspan. Many people call this a prehistoric looking bird because of the way its features are folded out. One of the main areas that you can find this bird in abundance is is the Mahika River on the coastland of Guyana. And from the capital city of Georgetown, it just takes you about an hour and a half of transport to get to that highlighted area. Some other birds that you can find along on the coastland are the black colored woodpecker, the blue, and the yellow and blue macaw, as well as the all parts of different diversities, scarlet ibis and the toucan. Moving further into the rainforest, some of the highlighted lodges that you can find a lot of birding species are the Irokrama River Lodge, the Atta Lodge, where the Irokrama canopy walkway in this photograph here can also be found, the Rewa and Sarama Eco Lodge as well. Throughout some of these lodges, you'll be able to find the Red Fan Parrot, the King Vulture, the Harpy Eagle, the Gayan and Cockatoo Rock, which is also very popular to our falls. Again, in red katinga, the white winged patu. You can also find some toucan species in this area as well. Moving more south into the country, into the South of Penuli savannas, you'll have highlighted lodges such as Karanambu Lodge, Karasbai, and other villages in the South of Penuli. In these areas, two of the more popular birds that you can find are the sun parakeets and the horthy throated pine tail. The red siskin is also very popular around these areas, but that is more towards the border of Brazil and Guyana. Now, any trip to Guyana that you'll be able to see wildlife, you'll be able to see birding, you must also see Kaishore Falls. It's the world's most popular single drop waterfall in the world with a height of 255 meters, which is about four to five times taller than Niagara Falls. On your way to actually seeing this fall, there is a short trek that you'll be able to take once your plane lands here. And on that trek, you'll be able to find a nesting spot of the Gayan and Cockatoo Rock, which if you're lucky, you can get to see up to three to four of them in a short space of time and in the same area. Now, everyone loves to come to Guyana to see the wildlife, the nature, but one of the most important things that you'll get to experience here is the food. Some of the highlighted dishes that we have, depending on where you stay in Ghana, will be chicken curry, which is an Indian-inspired dish, seafood burgers, and plantain fries, because we're very close to a lot of fishing, and we do a lot of fishing in Guyana. Plantain chips, which is a very popular snack in Guyana. Salted fish and bake. Pepper pot, which is an indigenous dish from our indigenous peoples. 
and it is made of a base from called Kaz fruit that is actually made from the provision of cassava. The name pepper pot, it's because we do add a lot of local pepper spices into the dish. And it's popularly made with meats such as pork, beef, and some people do make it with fish. But when you make it with fish, it's a dish called tuma pot. And also pot roast chicken. These are just some facts about Guyana in terms of our entry. Our main points of entry are the Chetty Jagan International Airport, the Eugene F. Correa International Airport, the Latham Crossing that connects Guyana to Brazil, and a Molson Creek Crossing that connects Guyana to Suriname. In the past year, from 2017 to 2018, Guyana has seen a 15.9% increase in its tourism arrivals. And as of year to date, from 2018 to 2019, June, we have seen about a 10% increase in our arrivals as well. Some of our main source markets um, by month, and you can see based on the projection, the highlighted times of travel in Guyana. From the Guyana Tourism Authority, some of the key support that we give our new operators and airlines include provide key information, assist with coordinating travel related events and setting up interviews with international and local tour operators as well to help make those connections, work with joint advertising, support through familiarization trips. We do help assist with reception at the airport when need be, and we do help to negotiate hotel rates um, once you have flights and trips confirmed and help building that relationship with the Guyana private sector as well. For more information on Destination Guyana, you can visit our website at guyanatourism.com or follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Discover Guyana using the hashtag Discover Guyana as well. You can also have a link to our Tourism and Hospitality Association of Guyana, which is the private sector sister agency of the Guyana Tourism Authority at exploreguyana.org. For more information on statistics on Guyana, you can visit statisticsguyana.gov.gy. For more information on investment into the Guyan tourism product, you can also visit goinvest at gov.gy. And for more information on the main arrival airport in Guyana, please visit cg, cjairport-gy.com. And now this brings me to the end of my presentation and any questions that you guys have that I would love to answer. Thanks so much, Nicola. We've had quite a few come through, and if you want to type a few through, we'll just have Nicola on for a few more minutes. We don't want to make the webinar too lengthy. Um, but I thought this was a really good question for anyone on the line doing um, groups. What is the average group size that you might recommend? Um, and if you just wanted to go into you know, the interior lodges um, and their uh, max occupancy. Um, for an average group size, I would say about six to 10. One of the things that um, you should be aware of once you travel into the interior, into the rainforest and savannas, is that the accommodation there, it's about eight rooms maximum. There are all shared accommodations. So you can fit up to two to four persons in most rooms, but depending on the needs of your clients as well, you do have to keep that in mind as well. So more, um, a good group size would be about six to 10 if they are willing to do shared accommodation, which most of the times you will have to do because of the infrastructure in the Rupununi, it the most would be about nine to 11. One thing to keep in mind too, a lot of the chargers that you do get to take to some of these lodges do range, do have different charger rates um, in terms of seats. So you'll have one that has a nine seater, a 12 seater, and then a 15 seater. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much. Um, this is also a good question. Um, is, Guy is the interior of Guyana considered part of the Amazon? So the interior of Guyana is actually part of the Amazon basin, um, which is what the Amazon filters out of. We do consider it as part of the general rainforest, but technically it is a part of the Amazon basin. I know right now there are a lot of um, fires happening in the general Amazon, and we are connected in one way or another to that as well. We're not affected here in Guyana, but we do hear um, the calls and we do keep protection of our rainforest as an important part as well. We do have what is called the Irocrama Rainforest here in Guyana, which is a protected area 
in Ghana and in the world as well. Perfect. Um, this is a good question. Um, getting to um, Suriname from Guyana, there are uh, flight options, correct? Yes. Okay. So from um, Guyana to Suriname, there are two main flight options you can take. You can actually travel from the Chetty Jagan International Airport with Suriname Airways. This goes to the main airport in Suriname and the flight is 45 minutes. Um, this is because it is a bigger plane. Or you can go with the from the Eugene F. Cry International Airport with Trans Guyana Airways that lands in the smaller airport in Suriname, which is in their city center. This flight is about an hour to 15 minutes because it is a smaller um, 13 to 15 seater plane. Perfect. Uh, we'll just take one more question. I know we've kept it to about 30 minutes here. Um, and this is a good question. What are some of the common amenities and activities that are offered at these interior lodges in both the what's considered the rainforest and savanna lodges? For example, mm -hmm. a la carte services, on-site guides, et cetera. So in both of the lodges, you should um, your operator would be able to help you pre-book these as well. But in terms of services, you do have on-site guides that will be able to give you some of those tour guides around the area. You do you um, would need to speak with them beforehand to let them know what type of activities you would like to do so that they can make their arrangements. If you would like to do a river tour, they'll be able to get the supplies for the boat needed. If you want to do more of a land tour, they'll be able to get those supplies as well needed. Um, in terms of the accommodation in the room, all the rooms are standard basic standard accommodation. There are no ACs in the lodges, but you will have the general breeze and air of the night, which is pretty cool. The lodges do have Wi-Fi on at certain areas um, on the property and at certain times of the night. This is because the bandwidth is very limited, so they cannot open it up during the day to a lot of personnel but you will have the option to purchase some of that bandwidth during that day if it's absolutely necessary sure. um, um in terms of, oh go, go ahead. ahead no you go ahead oh. i was gonna um wrap up the the questions but you're perfectly fine keep going <laughs> sure. uh in terms of meals most of these meals that you have here it's more of a buffet style that you will have your in their main seating or dining area where you, um, your tour group and any other tour group that will be there during the time, they'll also be able to join you as well as your guides do sit in with you during this period of time and you can sit and discuss, learn more about the culture, about the area and they will tell you stories of their personal stories, past stories and be able to answer all of your questions that you have or if you'd like to know a little bit more. Perfect. If we didn't get to your question, um, just know that I will be sending Nicola a whole list of these and we'll have her get to them um, so that we can send you the answers privately. But other than that, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we have one more webinar in this particular webinar series called um, uh, survival, uh, Jungle Survival, which Nicola will be doing in October or September, I believe, but you'll get an um, invite to that. But thanks so much for joining us today. Again, if we didn't get to your question, we'll be answering them personally. But Nicola, thanks so much for your time. And everyone, thanks so much for your time as well. Thanks, Jesse.